Hi everyone and welcome to episode 3 of Performance Max for Developers. I'm Devin, a developer relations engineer supporting the Google Ads API. In this episode, we'll be walking through the process of creating a campaign budget as well as a campaign. Just a friendly reminder to please hit that like button if you're enjoying the content and don't forget to subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. All right. Let's dive in. So as you might recall from previous episodes, we'll be creating a bulk mutate operation which contains the contents of a valid serving performance max or Pmax campaign. And that consists of what I'm calling three entities, even though it's really more. It's our campaign budget, our campaign, and one or more asset groups plus some other related entities. For the purposes of today's talk, we're going to focus on those first two, the campaign budget as well as the campaign. To help us learn more about these two resources, we're gonna make heavy use of the interactive guide application. And if you're not familiar, this is an application that we use to kind of explore the code all in one place and it'll teach us a little bit about what's required and what our different options are in terms of configuring our Pmax campaign. I left a link to the interactive guide in the description below. All right, so in the interactive guide here, uh, I'm in the campaign budget operation. And before I actually jump into the campaign budget, let me hop over to the full code example here. And if you take a look, I'm gonna scroll past a lot of the imports, which are common for Java. And here at the top, we have a temporary ID for our budget, as well as our campaign. And because this is a bulk mutate operation, we have to make use of these temporary IDs. That way we can reference the objects that we're creating before they're actually created. We do so using temporary IDs. And if you're not familiar with bulk mutate operations, I'll leave a link to a guide in the description below. All right, so let's hop back over to campaign budget operation. And if you've created a campaign budget using the Google Ads API, this should be pretty straightforward. It's really no different than creating any other sort of budget with a few small exceptions. So the first thing I want to point out is the use of this temporary ID that I just referenced a moment ago. When you create a resource in a bulk mutate operation, you have to set the resource name on that operation using a unique temporary ID. And in the Google Ads API, this is a negative number. And that negative number has to be unique in the scope of that request. So here, if you recall, this was negative one, and we set the resource name here. And that way we can reference this campaign budget in the next step when we create our campaign. So as far as creating a campaign budget goes, it's really straightforward, as I've already said. There's just two things I wanna call out. First and foremost, the delivery method must be standard for Pmax campaigns. And then second, performance max campaigns cannot use shared budgets, so we must set explicitly shared to false. All right, that's about it. Let's move on to the campaign. Now we're in the campaign section of the interactive guide. And again, if you've created campaigns using the Google Ads API before, this should all be pretty straightforward. There are a few more things that I wanna share with you about campaigns as compared with the campaign budget. But first, let's go back to that concept of temporary IDs. As I just said, we need a reference to the campaign budget. So as you can see here, we set the campaign budget and we use that budget temporary ID to create the resource name. And similarly, we set the resource name of the campaign itself using the temporary ID of that campaign. If you recall from earlier, that was negative two. So now we have two unique negative numbers which we're using as temporary IDs to create these objects in our bulk mutate request. So there are a few things that I wanna call out about campaigns specifically as it relates to performance max. First, uh, I just wanna take a look at the bidding strategy. So as you can see here, this is all commented out in the code, this section here. However, it does need to be set. And when setting a bidding strategy in our performance max campaign, we have two options. We can either select maximize conversions or maximize conversion value. So if you watched the first episode, you heard me talk a bit about conversion actions and how we should really be thinking about those conversion goals from the get-go. Here's a perfect example of that. So regardless of whether I choose maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, 
I really want to be thinking about what's the goal of my campaign? What am I trying to accomplish here? So let's say, for example, I'm trying to maximize the number of purchases users make on my website, right? And I don't necessarily care what the value is. And that could be because maybe all the products on my website have the same value. So it really doesn't matter. In that case, I can just select maximize conversions, which maximizes the number of times users complete the action that I want them to complete. Alternatively, maximize conversion value, we're maximizing the value of those conversions. So when you create a conversion action, you can actually assign a value to each individual conversion. So let's say, for example, I have my store and I have different products and they all have different values. Well, I can assign those values from creating my conversion actions. And then what Google Ads will automatically do in the context of a BMAX campaign is try to maximize the value to me. Depending on whether you select maximize conversions or maximize conversion value, that'll also dictate the conversion goal that you can optionally set on this campaign. So for example, let's set this to maximize conversions. And you can see here, now I have the option to fill out target CPA micros. And what this is saying effectively is what's the target amount I want to pay per conversion. And as you can see, now that I've set that in my code, set maximize conversions is now set here. And if I set this optional field, let's say I set it to 5,000 micros, then I now have my target CPA set. Alternatively, let's say maximize conversion value. Now I can set target ROAS or return on advertising spend. And this represents the percentage return that I'm going to get on my budget. So let's say I set that to two. That represents a 200% return on my budget and advertising spend. So that about covers bidding strategy. Let's move on to some other things. All right, the next thing I should cover, and this should be pretty self-explanatory, but when creating a campaign in the context of Pmax, the advertising channel type must be Performance Max. You guessed it. All right, I can optionally set start date, end date for my campaign. I'll just skip that for now. And then finally, I have this option, URL expansion opt-out, which I can select true or false. In Performance Max campaigns, Google can automatically replace the final URLs that you choose with more relevant landing pages and headlines based on customer intent to try to maximize those conversions or conversion value. So if I select this to true, which means I want to opt out of this feature, Google won't do this and it'll only use the final URLs I provided. Now, if I set this to false, that means I'm not opting out for this and Google can go ahead and replace those final URLs and landing pages. By default, URL expansion is off if product filters are applied and on when targeting all products. Other than those few things, creating a PMAX campaign is pretty straightforward as compared with creating any other type of campaign. In the next episode, we'll shift our attention to PMAX retail campaigns. And in doing so, I'll show you how to update more campaign settings in order to change this from a standard PMAX campaign to a retail campaign. See you next time.